What's up, family? Breaking news. Steve Sorry, otherwise known as Steve Harvey, is firing his entire daytime talk crew. And he's moving to L.A. to start a new show. Now, what's telling about this is that these are people that he worked closely with every day. And he didn't have the decency to tell them himself. Now, some of you are going to say, well, you know, people get fired all the time. Nobody gets to talk to the CEO. CEO don't fire people. You know, he gets his underlings to do it. True. But in this type of situation where you work in close quarters with the CEO and you're sharing personal stories every day, talking about family. Hey, how are you? How's the kids? How's the wife? You know, you're talking about what you did over the weekend. All that. It's a little different. So put yourself in the same position. Somebody looking you in your face every day. Asking you about your personal life. Asking you how you're doing. Shaking your hand. Giving you hugs. Uh, sharing their personal stories. And you, develop, you have this camaraderie. Friendship. You feel like, you know, your family. You've been working with these people, this, this person for five years. Then all of a sudden, somebody tells you that you're fired. Now, this person just saw you, just walked by you five minutes ago. <laughs> Didn't have the decency to tell you what was going on, pull you to the side. Had it been me, I would have called a meeting with my crew. If not, just talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, and I would explain the situation. And for the ones, if I, if I was not going to retain any of them, I would have said, hey, this is what it is. For the ones that I was taking with me, I went to them one by one. Now, it's uncertain, it's, it, it's uncertain if he had one or two of them that he actually retained. We don't know. Uh, I'm sure he told them to stay quiet if he did. But this is a dirty bastard. You know, some of y'all say, well, it's a show. He can do what he want to. And, you know, we don't really know the story. Yeah, we know the story. This this goes to the root of this dude's character. This is who this dude, he's the type of dude he is. He a low-down bounce. Even when he had his sitcom, uh, his Steve Harvey sitcom back in the gap. I know people who worked on that staff who said he was a low-down bastard. And talked about how he treated people on, on, on the set. Uh... This is a dude, y'all keep in mind. This is the dude, this is the same dude that y'all love so much who kicked his own children's mother out of her house. This is the dude, the child, the, the mother of his child kicked her out on the streets, made her homeless. He bought some land from a white man and he allowed the white man to live on the land while he kicked his black wife out on the streets and y'all still love this motherfucker come on man y'all still making excuses for this motherfucker this motherfucker is the devil man I don't care what me and my ex goes through what me and the mother of my children go through, I would never do some shit that low down because regardless of how I feel about her, my children, I know for a fact, love their mother with everything in them. So why would I purposely do something to hurt somebody that they love so dearly? I wouldn't do that to myself let alone my children. Because if I did it to them, then my kids are going to resent anybody that hurt their mother, including me. But this is the type of dirty motherfucker this dude is. He a dirty, low-down, rotten scoundrel. 
That is who he is. It's not hard to see. He has a pattern. It's a pathology. This is what this dude is about. This is what he had to say about the whole situation. Noticeably omitting any mention of the staff. This is what he said. As I embark on this new adventure, I'm excited to explore everything Los Angeles has to offer for this show. Steve is going to be different than my current daytime show. The new location will allow me to welcome more celebrity guests and more importantly, let me do what I enjoy doing best, being funny. I thought you enjoyed best being a bitch. That's what I thought you enjoyed. I thought you enjoyed cooning. That's what I thought you enjoyed. Now here's the thing. He may just have done the people who work with him a favor, the ones that he's not taking with him. He may have done them a favor because you know when you work with somebody for a long time and you're around people a long time, some of their ways tend to rub off on you, especially a successful person. Because whether that person is a good person or a bad person, their ways just tend to rub off on you because you're looking at that person and you want to be where they are. You want to have that same type of success. And you may think that shitting on people is the way to get there. You may think that cooning is the way to get there. So he may have, who knows, he may have deterred some future cooning. Some of y'all, y'all may have been able to avoid that fucking cooning that he does. Because y'all know deep down inside he's a fucking coon. Everybody know that. So it may have spared you. But how can anybody be surprised about all of this? This dude kicked out the mother of his own children. Then he backdoed it with a book. Dude wrote a book. Uh, well, actually, he wrote the book, I believe, before he kicked, the, kicked his, uh, the mother of his children out. But he wrote a book about relationships. This is a dude that's been married three times. That's just married. We ain't talking about all the other fucked up relationships he's been in. But he he's wrote a book about romantic relationships. And... He kicked his children's mother out into the streets, made his children, this is a multi-millionaire, made his children's mother homeless. And he married a woman who had babies for two cousins. Y'all know how this shit go in. She gonna take his ass for everything he got. That shit ain't gonna last. She gonna take his ass on a ride. That's how that's going to end up. Now, this dude for a long time has been dead to me. They just never made the announcement. We didn't get any funeral arrangements or nothing like that. He's just been dead. The What's telling me also is that, you know, he got this thing that he does where he likes to Talk about God all the time. He love the way he, but he be working that he be working God on y'all asses. Y'all be falling for that shit too. Now here's the thing. I ain't got no problem with God. I got my own personal relationship with God, and I think everybody should have a personal relationship with God. But all that throwing God around, he throw God around and he use it to me, I think, when it's convenient, he use it. To, to make people relax their defenses, especially if somebody he thinks somebody's going to be critical of him or he's trying to win somebody over, he'll throw God in there. And I'm going to tell you, I'm always suspicious of people who do business and they start talking about God. If we're doing business, man, let's do business. Now, we're going to have a discussion about God. Let's talk about God. But if 
we doing business. You start talking about God, man. I'm be like, man, I'm gonna start watching my antennas going up. I'm gonna be watching you a little bit more because I know people who use that God as a tool to take advantage of people. And it's a lot of people do it. A lot of con artists do that. So I'd be very suspicious of, of, of a cat that always throwing God into the discussion. It's God. I mean, you ain't no pastor, Nick. You, you, a, you a fucking a C-rated damn comedian who was able to, you know, to win on a scale to where you was able to fucking, you know, get out of there with millions, trick the people into millions and shit, thinking that you was actually a king of comedy. You, you out of all the dudes who was actually on that stage, you was the weakest. I guess that's why they had you hosting. Yeah, but anyway, um, another thing he likes to do, he likes to cry a lot. Be very suspicious of a man who cries a lot. And I would be very suspicious of anybody who cries a lot because once again, that's often used as a tool to relax people's defenses so that you can get what you want. Babies do it all the time. So I'm very suspicious of a grown ass 60 year old man doing it. All that crying. <laughs> yeah, he cry like a I was about to say he cried like a bitch, but he don't cry like, he don't even cry like a bitch. He cried like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> All that shit be just streaming. I'm like, I be want this shit up. Stop all that goddamn crying. Be a man. Man up. Grow some balls. All that damn crying. Too much crying. I know a man ain't supposed to cry, but it's okay for a man to cry. That motherfucker cry too much. Another thing he like to talk about is grandma. I would think that your grandmama would, would be real embarrassed by your ass right now. Your grandmama came up at a time when black people were getting hosed and uh your grandmother, even before that, your grandmother experienced a whole lot of disrespect. A whole lot of fucking disrespect. And for you to take that struggle and take it and start fucking cooning, to me, you shitting on your grandmother's legacy. So I can't see your grandmother being proud of your cooning ass. I can't see it at all. Fucking coon. I cannot see it. Let me tell you something, man. The same people that your rotten ass see on your way up, you're going to see them on the way down. That's guaranteed. Yo, if y'all like the videos I'm shooting at you, make sure you go join the movement. Go to patreon.com slash Willie D Live. The link is in the description. No more talk. What, what the ladies talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.